Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Oh great, we've got a Karen over here too. This is Neon, this is Clownfish TV, and we're going to talk about anime again. Uh, the anime ban again. And uh, yeah, we've got this guy running for Congress. K.W. Miller for Congress. He's a Florida man. And he's concerned about anime and porn now too. In fact, he thinks Dragon Ball Z is lewd. They're now introducing a great deal of anime porn into the internet matrix, says K.W. Miller for Congress. Dragon Ball Z is one of the top issues here. Of all the things going on in the world, of all the things going on in the country, we're going to worry about Dragon Ball Z. They are sexualizing cartoon characters to push a depraved agenda on our kids. What's next? Where will it end? What the hell? Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the, the continued, the continued assault on anime and manga and Dragon Ball Z of all the stuff you're getting to get offended about. There's no, there's no porn in Dragon Ball Z, dude. I don't know what Dragon Ball Z stuff you're looking at, but I don't think it was official. Were you talking about naked Goku from like 30 years ago? Is that what you're offended by? I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Warner Media and Crunchyroll. And uh, Crunchyroll seemingly still uh, trying to get the word out that it's doing okay. Uh, it's doing all right. And Rooster Teeth having a 10-day convention. 10-day convention. 10 days. Uh, we're going to talk about that too. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're at almost 130,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Uh, yeah, this is just this is just insane. Uh, but again, this is making the rounds globally because Australia is pushing very, very hard to get problematic, problematic, I'm using air quotes, problematic anime and manga banned, light novels banned. We've been talking about some light novels like No Game, No Life that just mysteriously disappeared from Amazon and we think a lot of the pressure is actually coming from an Australian legislator working with uh, an activist or a group of activists in Japan. Kinokuniya in uh, Sydney actually pulled a bunch of the books too. And these are a lot of the same titles that we're seeing pulled in, uh, in Amazon too. And it doesn't make a lot of sense because the titles they're pulling aren't really that bad. They really aren't. No Game, No Life. Really? That's what you're going to... They, they claim that there's like incestual relations going on there. Have you have you read it? Have you watched the anime? No, you haven't. Uh, I don't think you have. And now it's coming to America too. But this guy seems legitimately kooky. I don't know how far he's going to get. But I'm telling you, uh, there is absolutely a war on anime coming because it's gotten too popular. It's gotten too mainstream. It means uh, too much money, too much attention... For these attention seekers, these politicians who want to latch on to uh, some sort of outrage to boost their platform, get elected, you know, vote for this guy because he's going to ban Dragon Ball Z. I mean, come the frick on. Warner Media's Crunchyroll hits 3 million streaming subscribers as anime continues to gain traction. This is why they're coming for it. It's getting too popular. And uh, anytime anything is popular, it has to be controlled. And if it can't be controlled then it's it's problematic. But I think there's something else going on here with Crunchyroll. I, I've been saying for a while that uh, my feeling is eventually AT&T may roll Crunchyroll into HBO Max. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, it was reported a couple of months ago that AT&T was actually going to sell off Crunchyroll. And that did explain a lot because Crunchyroll put this um, kind of a puff piece out that felt more like a sales pitch, like they're trying to justify their existence as a standalone streaming service. But now they're they're making sure everybody knows that they hit 3 million subs. Um, 
the thing is, is in the streaming wars, it's not really a whole lot. And what might be buying them time is the fact that HBO Max has not taken off uh, as quickly as people were hoping. Um, a lot of people did subscribe to HBO Max, but the fact that it's not on Amazon, Fire TV, or Roku is a huge, huge, huge uh, tactical blunder on their part. And I think it's the same with Peacock, too. Like, they were not available on the most popular streaming sticks, streaming apps, uh, platforms at launch. I, I don't know why. I would have been like, whatever they want, just do it. But there, there's word that they think Amazon is playing hardball because they're trying to keep uh, Warner Media from competing directly with them. I don't know. But here, this is coming from Deadline. Crunchyroll, the anime specialist now controlled by Warner Media, has hit a milestone of 3 million subs to its streaming service. Uh, the GM who, let's see, uh, Joanne Wag, who took helm of Crunchyroll in 2018, said the platform has seen accelerating growth. This is Deadline, right? So they're going to use this. They're going to keyword it. Warner Media. So when the Warner Media execs, who are now cutting corners all over the company... Uh, they're they're merging uh, divisions. They're they're getting rid of divisions. Uh, they're kicking people to the curb, so they make sure that's the first keyword. And then uh, you know the, the general manager who took control in 2018 is probably trying to save her job. If I'm being honest, uh, she said the platform has seen accelerating growth. Founded in 2006, it reached a million streaming subs in 2016, and then hit two million toward the end of 2018. Initially a San Francisco-based online forum for uploaded anime clips and message boards, it's grown to 70 million registered users. Crunchyroll says it has the world's largest anime library, with more than 1,000 titles and 30,000 episodes. Initially a unit of Otter Media and AT&T, it was shifted last year under the aegis of Warner Media and its entertainment chairman, Bob Greenblatt. The main reason for the shuffle was the launch of HBO Max, which includes a hub of anime fair curated by Crunchyroll. That is the thing. And that's what a lot of people, you know, us included, have been speculating is that Crunchyroll might just be the brand of anime content on HBO Max. But again, they made some huge mistakes, I think, with the launch of HBO Max. I like HBO Max, but the fact that I can't watch it on my Fire TV or my Roku, uh, we've got four TVs in the house and I can't watch it on any of the TVs, is very, very irritating. In an interview with Deadline, she declined to speculate on the broader strategy of Warner Media and streaming, but she said the goal is to fuel both Crunchyroll and HBO Max. We believe we can grow this area by exposing people to it, she added. So, what is going on here? I think, uh, you know, I think she's reading the headlines. I mean, when you see this, AT&T was going to sell off Crunchyroll, and you got videos by these, these jokers over clownfish tv saying that uh, they got warner people leaking information to them that uh, it's possible that crunchyroll could get rolled into hbo max they're they're gonna freak out a little bit right so we'll see what happens uh, again we have another division of warner trying to justify its existence rooster teeth which i think is getting close to done at this point like everybody that anybody cared about has basically left Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth has had some disastrous PR in the last year. The word on the street is that they're considering rolling Rooster Teeth into Cartoon Network Studios, and it basically just becomes kind of the 3D anime style arm of, of Cartoon Network and not its own company. Given how many people are leaving, I think Rooster Teeth is about done, but they, they just announced they're going to do this, this Rooster Teeth 10 day virtual con. 10 days. 10 days can you why how are they gonna have 10 days worth of content look comic-con at home was a bust it, it was a flop now granted i think rooster teeth probably has a better shot because of the kind of content they produce and that they have a pretty massive online audience already but comic-con was a bust it, it, it was a dud and they're gonna do it for 10 days uh so here we go cbr rooster teeth expo at home 10-day virtual con for September. Uh, revealed the first details for RTX at Home, this year's virtual alternative to the flagship convention in Austin. A 10-day virtual convention running from Tuesday, September 15th to Friday, September 25th. 
There will be a break in live broadcast over the weekend with Saturday, September 19th and Sunday, the 20th, instead of being dedicated to airing recaps and rebroadcast from the previous four days of the con. Isn't that basically what they do already online? I mean, it's, how is it any different from what they're already doing? Uh, the at-home programming will broadcast on roosterteeth.com and Rooster Teeth's mobile apps. The virtual convention will be free for all Rooster Teeth first members. However, select panels will be free to watch for everyone. Select panels, including Ruby Volume 8 panel and the Red vs. Blue Zero panel. Uh, RTX is known not only for the convention itself during the daytime, but also the various comedy shows, parties, concerts, and gaming events that take place in downtown Austin after the sun goes down. While those kind of things won't be taking place this year, RTX at Home will recreate the vibe with special one-time only virtual events. Those who would like to attend the events have to purchase... Wow! Those who would like to attend these virtual events have to purchase tickets with first members being given first dibs. Trying to justify, trying to boost the first uh, membership thing, I guess. Again, to justify their existence to Warner. Uh, RTX at Home will also feature virtual meet and greets with Rooster Teeth personalities, you know, whoever's left. Uh, personalized video recordings, group happy hours, and more. Like with the virtual nighttime events, these experiences will require the purchase of separate tickets. These tickets will be limited, and once again, Rooster Teeth first members get early access. Are you... Are, is anybody going to do this? There's no comments. Is anybody actually going to do a 10-day virtual Rooster Teeth con where you have to pay separate to, to do some of the events? Like to virtually drink with whoever the hell's left at Rooster Teeth at that point? Sounds kind of dumb to me. And again, you know, Comic-Con flopped. And this is San Diego Comic-Con, heavily promoted on all these pop culture blogs, and it flopped. So I don't know, guys. I think I think Crunchyroll and Rooster Teeth, um, they're scrambling right now, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, I think that there's going to be an attack on anime. I think it's going to continue as anime becomes more and more important, especially now with the shutdown, the animation can continue live action shows are you know or were for a while kind of dead in the water but dragon ball z is the best you can the best you can do it's the worst offender god it doesn't get out much hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.